So yesterday this video went viral across Twitter of Sneeko meeting some of his fans in real life during one of his live streams as he was attending some sort of football or baseball game, some sort of sporting event. And I'm not actually going to play the video here today because I do want to cover this whole death of the red pill thing more extensively later this week. But to understand what I am going to be talking about today, you have to know that these kids pretty much come up to Sneeko and they start saying a bunch of bigoted talking points that Sneeko has basically parroted across Twitter for the last year or so. I mean, I guess you could say it even started on his YouTube channel back before he got banned. And so they pose for the picture, they start saying, uh women they start saying terrible things about transgender people about gay people and basically Sneeko just kind of sees in real time the effects of his degenerate breeding content whether Sneeko actually believes these things or not I don't think that we'll ever really know because he's gone from being this more or less free-thinking person to essentially being no different than these people who kind of just rage bait on Twitter all day while people with leftist ideologies pretty much just live rent-free in his head. But like I said, that's kind of another topic that I'm going to cover later this week. And now here's where the real topic of today's video kind of jumps out at you like a little jump scare. Because today I'm going to be talking about Logan Paul's left nut. I'm going to be talking about one of the most successful coattail writers of all time. If you don't know, Mike Magilak is Logan Paul's podcast co-host. And he's actually been the only one who's been able to stick around since the very beginning. And we got at Hey Big Mike. Six foot three, I like long walks. If you clap at the end of flights, I don't like you. As sometimes these two have had beef. But when it comes to his relationship with Logan Paul, he's always going to back him up. He's always going to ride him like a roller coaster at Six Flags. And in my mind, he is essentially in debt to Logan for the rest of his life. Because he took Mike from essentially being this average guy and turned him into like an influencer. And because of his connections with Logan, Mike has a best-selling book. He has a big house. He has a lot of money. He was able to change his family's life. So at this point, it's pretty obvious that he'll be loyal to his scamming buddy till the very end. And to give Mike a little bit of credit, I do think that over the years, he's become by far the most tolerable person on the podcast. Because when that show first started, I hated Mike. I thought he was very annoying. I thought he was overbearing. He didn't know when to shut up. A lot of times he would make the podcast about himself, but now being honest, he's now improved to a point where he should likely be the A mic, he should be the one driving the podcast, asking the most questions. But where I really start to have a problem with him now is really his new virtuous, holier-than-thou attitude that he's constantly displaying on Twitter. So he shares that video of Sneeko and kind of puts a little response out there saying, promoting this type of hate to young boys is way worse than any alternative. And I do think that's kind of like his subconscious talking, little bit of insecurity there because he knows the bad things that he's promoted to the youth himself. Not blaming Sneeko specifically, but this is simply not okay and needs halting now. And in this situation, it's one of those things where it's like, okay, I get the message, but I don't really get the messenger. And to me, I don't think there's really that many men out there just clinging to the words of like a fresh and fit. And if they are, I mean, those guys were kind of just destined to be incels. And for those of you that aren't so familiar with Mike, I will tell you here in a second why he should not be the one spreading this message, acting like he's so virtuous. So he even goes on to expand on this thought, saying, The explosion in men demeaning women is due to men who can't get women finally having a group to belong to and a way to deliver their sadness and insecurity. These are not alpha men, they're the biggest p****s on earth. And like I said, I don't think there's a lot of grown men clinging on to the words of these idiots. He even goes on to further expand, saying, Take it from someone who does and has gotten women their whole life, is what he's saying. They don't get women. They act like they do for content. They have small d***s. I don't know how he knows that. And they've gotten hurt by women their whole lives. So now they fight back against them with other losers. I did think this was kind of a funny clapback. Someone says, I'm sure, bro. Whole life, he said. <laughs> And this is why I say that Mike is being a huge hypocrite in this whole situation. I think he does feel a little bit guilty about what he's done in the last couple of years. Because obviously when it comes to Logan Paul, when it comes to his podcast, a lot of the viewers are going to be like 16 and under. With I'm sure some of them falling in that like 10 to 13 year old range. And because Mike's been in association with Logan, guess what? He gets a lot of that audience crossover. And it wasn't just Logan's coattails that Mike rode. The other thing that he's kind of infamous for is dating who I believe was at one time the number one corn star in the world, Lana Rhodes. 
and outside the podcast, all of his most popular videos he's ever posted all have to do with her. And not only her, but also people like, as you can see here, Riley Reed and other people involved in corn. And to me, honestly, I don't really know what is worse. Someone peddling all the nonsense that Sneeko and all these other guys are, or someone like Mike who has pushed absolute degeneracy on young boys as well. Because to me, one of the main problems for the youth is actually corn addiction. And Mike has done quite the job of normalizing that it's all good and that corn is really not a problem. He sees it as a net positive in society. I mean, he even says it himself right here when someone sarcastically replies that promoting is better. He says, I prefer to promote 100% over hate. And it's like, yeah, Mike, we know you would. You made a career off of it, my boy. He has never been as relevant as he was when he was dating Lana Rhodes. And the other major thing no one ever talks about when it comes to Mike and Logan is their big time sponsorship deal that they had with Blue Chew. For those of you guys that don't know, Blue Chew has the same active ingredients that Cialis and Viagra do. But what they did was they packaged that little blue pill into a bit of gum so it would seem a lot cooler for a young person to be doing it. Because back when I was young, you know, if you heard a guy had to take a little blue pill to get a hearty, you figured he was about 60 years old. And I personally think the promotion of this blue chew to 16 through like 25 year olds is completely f***ed up. Because the way he would promote this product was to essentially say, hey, you are gonna have the best time of your life. If you chew this gum up, your performance is gonna be better than it's ever been. They will be handing Miss Rhodes objects of varying stiffness and examining her reaction. Your first object, Miss Rhodes. Ooh. Your next object, Miss Rhodes. Wow, it's so floppy. Well, I got blue chew. Well, at least we know you'll be able to pitch a tent. I've been talking about these things for like four years now, and the main question I always get is, do they actually work? Yeah, they actually work. No doctor's visit, no line at the pharmacy, everything is done online, and it shows up to your door in discreet packaging, and guess what? They're also giving you your first month absolutely free. And for a lot of people watching, they might be in like late high school, early college. They're like, oh, cool, awesome. You know, I want to put in that work because let's be honest, when you're that age, what more do you really care about? But they don't think about the side effects and how eventually you might have to rely on that stuff to pitch a tent at all. Like if you were under the age of damn near 40 and he can't make your little friend stand up on his own, you do not need blue chew, you need to go see a doctor because you might have some other problem. And to me, it's like, Mike, you can't do the holier than thou act, especially when it comes to things that are promoted to young men. When you've promoted corn time and time again, which has shown to completely f the minds of young men. And then also alongside that, when they have this corn induced ED, which is a very real thing for a lot of young men out there. You're like, oh, here's the solution. Let me peddle this blue chew off to you, my boy. Are you guys seeing like the connections here? Are you walking around the room with me? You know, normally I'm not this talky talky in my videos. I'm not this serious. But to me, that is honestly a bigger problem than like an edgy phase that a kid would have. I mean, just look at this 28 million views on Logan Paul's channel, surprising my best friend with his favorite actress. And no, it's not Salma Hayek, guys. That's so, that's so sweet. As you like there's nothing more I really need to say but I do truly want to know what you guys think about this whole situation down below because I'm not saying I necessarily disagree with his message but I do find him to be a massive hypocrite y'all let me know what you guys think down below what's the number one problem plaguing young men today as always I do want to thank you guys for watching today's video dropping a like and subscribing as you guys know it's been your boy the tan superman and some other fake influencers out here need to be covered, so I'm out. Peace!